start the first chapter as we know that syllabus strain political has all over but we are going to take the revision of first chapter that is graphic development in the west west means here western countries of geography modern history of scientific history in Europe and geography. The fourth point is level calls. These are the main four points we are going to learn in this chapter. But from these four points, only two points we are going to learn or revise today. Historical research of understanding the chronology of the past events and their interconnections. Historical research is what the objectives of the study studies which are being carried out. They are not with an objective and in the chronology. And chronological last events they already done in past that one and their interconnection they see that are they related to or interconnected to each other. This is continuous. Only related to the events which have been the past. <clears throat> In the physical and natural sciences, the empirical method means laboratory method of so physical and natural science and to be available physical experiments and observation is used for verifying the knowledge this method this method allows formulating laws that remain true irrespective of the time and space. Whether the time changes, whether the space changes, but the laws does not change. The result remains the same. Those laws can be tested and proved repeatedly. If you repeat the experiment, the result will be same. If you are following the proper steps, the result will come same. It will not change. This is in science. But we are going to learn history. So, but for history, experimental method or empirical method is not conducted. In historical research, it may not be possible to use the method of laboratory experiments and observation in historical research if you are doing any historical research for that purpose laboratory experiments and observation is not possible this is so because we were not present in the historical time and space and the historical events cannot be recreated why this is because because at that time we were not present when the events occur at that time we were not present there and because of that we cannot use the laboratory experiments and observation method for historical research and we also know that we cannot create the same we cannot create the same event also in history it is not possible to formulate laws that remain true irrespective of time and space. In history, we cannot formulate the possible laws. We cannot 
use the laws which remains the same irrespective of time whether the time is changed or the whether the place is changed but the formula will or the law will not change it will remain the same it does not happen in history we cannot use such kind of laws in history to begin we need an expert for doing historical researches to do the historical researches we need an expert who knows the language and script of a historical document what he should know he should know the language and the script of the historical document on which we are doing the research in order to read it and understand its meaning for what purpose to read it and to understand its meaning he should know the expert should know the language and script of that prop, that historical document also the experts can examine the authenticity of the document and the experts can also examine the authenticity they should they examine whether the given document is real or fake authenticity of document by using criteria such as lettering style author style of writing manufacturing date type of paper stamps of authority etc on what basis they examine these documents on the basis of writing style on the basis of author's writing style lettering style what is the manufacturing date over there what type of paper is used and is there a stamp of the authority on that particular document such a document is further scrutinized by a historian with the help of the relevant historical references and after that what the his historian do he do the scrutiny of that the document and then in which way with the proper historical references relevant references he do the scrutiny of the document then we have here some of the historical research method writing of historical narrative how to write history in a narrative way in a narrative way there are some points given here like examining relevant references of the available historical information whatever may be the available information what we have to do we have to relevantly check it whether it is with the help of references we have to check that it is proper or not it is is it matching to the specific date or the period second is collecting historical information what we have to do here we have to collect the historical information highlighting the processes that lead to historical transitions carrying out comparative analysis then what we have to do first we have to collect the information highlight the processes main events of that historical information and then we have to analyze it we have to check it compare it with the other historical documents then next is understanding the references regarding time and space of the given historical events understanding the references at the same time many events occur at the same time in the past and then they are we have to check whether they are related to each other or not and also various conceptual frameworks used in the historical research method and there are many frameworks are there in that we have to verify it whether these historical research method how it is used then next point is formulating relevant questions in view of the historical references we have got the historical references then we have to prepare some formulate some relevant questions related to that document that document which we have we are researching for example we can make questions such as 
from where we have got that document at uh, what what type of paper is used is there a stamp of the authority on that document like this questions we have to formulate then we have to formulate the hypothesis hypothesis means if a proper study should be done of that document and we have to give the result of that it then critically examining of various sources of history then next is for the historical narrative writing what we have to do we have to critically examine the various sources there are various sources of history in last chapter we have saw that oral sources are there written sources are there material sources are there so we have to examine these type of sources in history for the historical research narrative writing then take out page number 2 we have here methods of various disciplines are useful in historical research there are various methods of disciplines which are very useful for the historical research for example archaeology archaeology means what here we have to actually visit that place and find something there or dig dig in the ground and find the remains of any monument or any specific person then archival science archives we know archives archives are the important document these archival science is related to archive main important documents manuscriptology manuscriptology means manuscripts means written records what are the written records that we have to scrutinize it then analysis of lettering style how is the lettering style of that period the document which we have got or the document on which we are doing the research what type of lettering style is been used linguistic which type of language is used on it then numismatics means study of the coins genealogy study of lineage means from one generation to another generation it passes genealogy etc so these are the some of the important things for the study of historical research for doing the historical research such type of points are very useful for us then we have the point number 1.1 tradition of historiography we have learned about historical research method we have right now we have learned about the various historical research methods critically examining the historical sources how to examine the historical sources and writing the historical narrative how to write the historical narrative first we have to see which type of paper it is like that which type of lettering style is there everything we have to first examine it and then we can write a narration on it the writing of critical historical narrative is known as his historiography the writing of critical historical narrative is known as historiography a scholar who writes such a narrative is a historian a scholar a person who writes such a narrative is known as a historian a person who writes history is known as a historian the historian cannot include every past event in his narrative the historian he cannot include every past event in his narrative the inclusion and interpretation of historical events by the historian often depends on the conceptual framework adopted by him the framework is used for writing the narrative on him which points he should while writing 
means it depends totally that for the purpose that he takes in his writings his style of writing is determined by that conceptual framework and according to his style of writing it is totally dependent on what purpose determined by that conceptual framework the framework which he is he has <clears throat> made in his mind that i will write this concept in this way it totally depends upon the historian the tradition of writing historical narrative that is historiography was not prevalent in the ancient societies of the world in the ancient societies it was not prevalent at ancient time it was not prevalent the tradition of writing historical narrative was not prevalent or not important for that people however that does not mean that they were not aware of the historical time or were not ignored. they were not prevalent regarding the historiography but it does not mean that they were no, not having the knowledge or not have, not were aware, aware of the historical time or the events which are being occurring ancient people also felt the need of passing on the stories of the life and valor of the ancestors to the next generation ancient peoples felt that we should pass our stories to one generation to another generation in the same way as we know our grandparents still say us as the stories why they say the stories because they feel that our we should also come to know about the things which have been occurred in the past by that they tell us the stories and we should also pass our experience to the next generation this is the main motive behind the stories which our ancestors tell ancient communities all over the world used various means like cave paintings storytelling singing songs and ballads etc for this purpose ancient community for the spread of history what they did they did cave paintings storytelling singing the songs and ballads ballads etc for the purpose of what for for sharing their experience from one generation to another generation these traditional means are looked upon as the sources of history in the modern historiography and these whatever the traditional means are there that are looked as the sources of history in the modern historiography like storytelling singing songs comes in oral oral sources paintings comes in written sources in the same way these are all the sources which we use in our modern historiography to do the research historical research then we have the second point that is 1.2 modern historiography four main characteristics of modern historiography there are four main characteristics of the modern historiography first one its method is based on scientific principles the method is totally based on the scientific principles it begins with the formation of relevant question this method begins with the formation of the relevant question first the question has been asked to that particular research or the document on which we are doing the research or the monument or any of the object first what we do we ask the or form the relevant question regarding that particular object or the document second one these questions are anthropocentric these questions are anthropocentric it means that these questions are about the deeds of the members of the ancient human societies 
of a particular period. Anthropocentric means what? The deeds means the work or the karmas, what that people or the members of the ancient human society had done in that particular period. History does not suggest any interrelation between the divine and human deeds. Divine and human deeds. They do not, does not suggest any interrelation. They don't, don't show any interrelation between human deeds and the divine. Divine means God. Related to God deeds, the works of the God. They never interrelate these two things. Third point. Answers to these questions are supported by reliable evidence. The answers, which the questions which we are asking, the answers, what we get for that particular question is supported by a reliable evidence. Means evidence is very important for that particular answer which we are getting from the question. Fourth one. History presents a graph of mankind's journey with the help of past human deeds. History presents a graph. It shows us a graph of the mankind's journey, how the man's mankind journey has been started, at what period, at what time the specific event had been occurred. Everything comes in a graph way. It is said that the modern historiography with above characteristics has its root in the ancient Greek historical writing. It is said that the modern historiography with all these characteristics has roots in ancient Greek historical writings. History is originally a Greek term. History is originally a Greek term. Herodotus, the Greek historian of the 5th century BCE before Common Era, used it first for his book entitled The Histories. The history word first time used by Herodotus for entitling his book name as The Histories. Then we have here, do you know, a picture is given here of a, the earliest inscription in the Lower Museum. We will see what has been given here regarding this picture. I am going to ask you the questions related to this picture. So observe the picture, read the content given here carefully, and at last I will ask you the questions related to these pictures. The above picture shows a fragment of the earliest inscription. It is showing the fragment. It is a part of the earliest inscriptions. Inscription means any written record or carvings done here. A forward marching file of soldiers holding shields and spears is seen here. What is seen here? A forward march of soldiers with having shields and spears is seen here. The journal, the general is front. In the front, we can see there is a general. The tradition of recording historical event can be traced back to some civilization in Mesopotamia. This is from this, we can know that it is from the summer civilization in Mesopotamia. Names of Sumerian kings and the stories of battles fought by them have been preserved in various inscriptions. Various battles, stories related to the various battles they have fought have been preserved in such type of inscriptions. The earliest inscription shown above dates back to 4500 BCA. The earliest inscription which is here shown above, it dates back to 4500 BCE. It records a battle fought between two kingdoms. What is the record here? The record of battle fought between the two kingdoms. It is now displayed at the Louvre Museum in France. This 
inscription is been displayed at the Louvre Museum in France. So now we will see the video related to this chapter. Then at last I will ask you the questions. development in the world. The brightest students of this school but future torchbearers of our society. I consider myself truly lucky to be in the presence of such young and bright minds. So, on this note, everyone give yourself a well-deserved applause. Now, without further ado, I'll tell you the real purpose of my visit here today. You all have been studying history for quite a while now. From your fourth grade, I assume? Therefore, you are all pretty familiar by now with the definition of history, which in simple terms is the study of the past events that helped shape human civilizations through the passage of time, which was further supplemented by numerous political, social, economic, religious changes, whose impact is felt even today. Now, here's the million-dollar question. How do we know about all this? How do we know that all the aforementioned changes shaped human civilizations which we are all part of today? The answer, quite simply, is through various sources that have helped us better understand the distant past. These sources, which are classified into material, written and oral, respectively, shed light on the achievements and failures of mankind since time immemorial. These sources, however, were not discovered all at once. It took innumerable years of excavation, followed by scrupulous, careful, and critical inquiry or examination of these sources in order to ascertain definite and time-tested facts or principles. This continuous, arduous, cumbersome, and at times even frustrating process is defined as historical research. Historical research of written sources, similar to material and oral ones, are undertaken with the sole objective of ascertaining the chronology of past events, along with the manner of transpiring of these events as well. This, just like I had mentioned earlier, is a continuous, arduous, cumbersome, and at times even frustrating process. I'm well aware that the subject of science, especially in grade 10, will introduce each and every one of you here today to a whole new, never-before-seen side of the said discipline, which would be facilitated with your exposure to a whole new and different range of experiments and apparatuses in the school laboratory. The two chief categories of sciences, namely physical and natural sciences, therefore heavily rely on the empirical or laboratory method of experimentation and observation to verify the available knowledge. This method, in turn, helps establish laws that remain true irrespective of time and space. Furthermore, these laws have the distinct advantage of being tested and proved correct by repeated experimentation. As far as the historical method of research is concerned, the use of experimentation and observation may not be feasible. This, for obvious reasons, is due to our absence during the occurrence of a historical event 
or events which transpired at that particular historical time and space which, in turn, cannot be recreated. Furthermore, in the subject of history, it was not possible to establish laws and principles that would remain true irrespective of time and space. Now, you all must be wondering that in spite of these drawbacks, how are we still able to view history just as it had occurred? In order to fulfill this Herculean feat, the contribution of a few individuals were not only crucial but essential. Through these short video clips, you can see how with the aid of a few intellectual minds, one could virtually travel back in time. Firstly, we required the services of a linguistic expert whose knowledge of the language and script of a particular historical document under study would help ascertain the reason for the occurrence of the corresponding historical event. Furthermore, he could examine the authenticity of the document by making use of various criteria such as lettering style, the concerned author style of writing, type of paper used and its manufacturing date, stamps of authority, etc. to further shed light on the cause and effect of the occurrence of that historical event. This document is later scrutinized by a historian with the aid of relevant historical references. So, in a nutshell, a historical method involves writing of a historical narrative which is achieved with the observance of the following processes. Critical examination of various sources of history. Examination of relevant references of the available historical information. Collection of historical information and highlighting the processes leading to historical transitions whilst carrying out comparative analysis. Understanding of the references regarding time and space of the given historical events along with various conceptual frameworks used in historical research method. Formulation of relevant questions in view of the historical references. Formulation of hypotheses. Furthermore, the application of the aforementioned methods in historical research would be near to impossible without the aid of various affiliated disciplines such as archaeology, archives, manuscriptology or codicology, that is, study of history and literature through the use of handwritten documents, namely manuscripts, epigraphy, that is, study of inscriptions, analysis of lettering style or graphology, linguistics, numismatics, that is, study of coins, genealogy, that is, study of lineage, etc. Historiography. So far, we have learned about the historical research method, which include critical examination of historical sources and writing of a historical narrative. This writing of critical historical narrative is known as historiography, and the individual or scholar who performed this task is known as a historian. <laughs> complete and unbiased form. He cannot include the occurrence of every past event in his narrative. Inclusion of the events by function of a concentration the style of writing determined by the very same. After carefully observing the various facets of historiography and the crucial tasks undertaken by a historian in writing of historical narrative or historiography, one definitely wonders whether human beings of distant past also followed the very same protocols. What steps did they take to record various events that had occurred during their time period? On the basis of scarce written sources excavated through the years, one can safely argue that writing historical narrative, that is, historiography, was not widely prevalent in the ancient societies of the world. However, one should not immediately assume that they were ignorant or indifferent to the historical occurrences that transpired during the said time period. Just as people of today, their ancient counterparts also felt the need of passing down crucial information.
ancient communities across the world use of various means such as stones and ballads, etc., for the dissemination of historical information. These traditional means the story of life. Students, I hope that you have understood till these 1.2 point. And do you know, now we will have your evaluation on the basis of, do you know, some, I have prepared some questions. So those who know answer or the person who can give the answer, raise your hand. Look at the picture and answer the following questions. In which museum the above object is displayed? Sandhya. Sandhya. Unmute yourself. Sandhya. Can you hear me? Okay, Kushibano. Unmute yourself. Yes, Sakshi Verma. Unmute yourself and give the answer. In which museum the above object is displayed? First question. Yes, Sandhya. Hello, Sandhya, am I audible, ma'am? Am I audible to everyone? Yes, Sandhya, give the answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll tell answer. The is the answer first one ka Liwara Museum. Lower yes, Museum. Yes, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. Very good. Then second question. What records are inscribed on it? Sakshi Sakshi Verma. Sakshi. Sakshi Verma.
गायत्री शर्मा गायत्री शर्मा खुशी बानो अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ एंड गिव द आंसर Yes, Kushi. What records are inscribed on it? Story of the sea. Let us now turn our attention. Yes, Sandhya, can you give the answer? Sandhya. Yes, sir. Yes, second one answer. Battle, battle fought between two two kingdoms. This is a record of this picture. Very good. It records a battle fought between two kingdoms. Kingdoms. Very good. Third one. The earliest inscription shown about date back to which BCE? Sir, four thousand five hundred BCE before Common yes. Era. Okay, before Common Era, four thousand five hundred BCE. BCE. Last question: In the above picture, who is leading the soldiers? Who is leading the soldiers in the above picture? The general is front of front is the okay. farm. Front. General okay, the will lead the The general is leading the soldiers. Very good. So, students, today in this from this first chapter, we have learned two points. That is one point one and one point two. In one in one point one, what we have saw that the tradition of historiography and in 1.2 the modern historiography there are main four characteristics of modern historiography that we have learned today or revised today as i know that your syllabus has been already over but then also the revision is going on and we have taken the two points today and remaining points we will be learning tomorrow and on next tuesday So this is your homework to open the top scorer app as everyone have got the id and password of top scorer app you can open the app and watch the videos of this chapter any student is having any doubt they can ask if anyone is having any doubt you can ask अनम्यूट करो अनम्यूट योर सेल्फ सोनू इफ यू आर हैविंग एनी डाउट सोनो खैर नगर स्कूल अनम्यूट यूर सेल्फ बेटा आई थिंक सो देर इज नो डाउट टू एनी ऑफ द स्टूडेंट टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट ऑफ द होमवर्क so this much was for today first two points that we have learned are tradition of historiography and the modern 
historiography these two points are revised by us today and tomorrow we are going to take 1.3 development of scientific perspective in europe and historiography and 1.4 notable scholars thank you students i end my lecture here thank you ma'am thank you sir thank you students